Okay, 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 okay. I know the title says only. It's not quite true, else I would no longer be making any videos and... Well, I still plan on making videos, so it's not 100% true. But the point is, these things are insanely versatile. You can make just about anything with them. If it's stone, these are what you want. You can make towers, walls, castle gate, temple stairs. These things are really only limited by your imagination, so go wild with them. But would recommend you build these. These are incredibly useful. Very, very good for starting out and giving yourself a whole lot of options. So for the overall design, I got three inch by three inch tiles, which fit nicely with the dungeon tiles I've made and other modular systems that are out there. Black Magic Craft uses three by threes. I believe RP Archive also does. So it's just a good modular design, good size. So using three inch by three inch as the base, I wanted approximately a cube. Now. This isn't quite a cube, it's about three and a half inches tall, extra layer, but that way these stairs are three inches tall, which will work nicely with some other things potentially, depending on how you lay things out. Anyway, it's not super critical, but I decided to go with five layers. That'll get me pretty close to three inches, slightly over since the foam that I have, it's half inch anomaly, but it's actually closer to five eighths. So by stacking up five of them with a little bit of texture, it's pretty close to three inches tall. Each of these guys needs three, three by three, three tiles. I recommend that you cut out all the pieces as three by three tiles and not as five eighths, one and a quarter, one three quarters, and I don't remember what this one is. If they all start as the same size, you're really just cutting two of them in half or in chunks, and that way they are more likely to line up nicely instead of potentially one being too long and they don't line up right. So I would recommend cutting everything from three by three tiles. To do that, I cut about 50 three by threes that got me, I want to say pretty close to 18 of these. Might be a few more than 50 is what I actually did. And then actually as I cut the strips, I beveled the edges. No need to do this right now. You can just wait till you have all the pieces cut and bevel all the edges at the end. But I just find that it's easier to just cut all the way down a long piece instead of constantly going through new pieces. I don't know how much time this actually saves, but it feels more productive, I guess, to me. When cutting these strips, I also did mark the easy to texture side. One side on foam is, I don't know if it's with the grain or without the grain, against the grain, um, but it definitely takes texture much better. So just marking that and keeping note of that um, definitely would be useful. That way you can make sure that the most textured side, the nicest texture is on the side that you want visible. So I chose to put the nice textured side on the front of the stairs in the back. And that way I can orient these blocks so that that's most prominent. And then the sides aren't as nicely textured, but they still have some pretty decent texture. It just helps everything look more consistent. So once I had all my three by three tiles, I went ahead and worked on cutting the two thirds of them into smaller pieces. So one third of them I cut five eighths of an inch off and that gave me the top and second from the bottom layers. After cutting those, I went on to cut the second and third layer, which I cut off an inch and a quarter from another third of the tiles, the three by three tiles. Once that was done, I went ahead and went on to adding the tile lines. So for the lines, I wanted a offset stonework pattern, as you can see here, where they're offset. Uh, if you'd like to look at some other designs, RP Archive has some where he uses one inch tiles and he just has one inch cubes marked out. Different look, uh, but take what you like. So I wanted this offset stones. But with this, it actually has uh, left and a right halves. Um, if I grab some here. So if you take two that are the same setup with the little bit on the same side, when you put them together, no, that's not the, way, um, the sides look great, but on the back and front, these ones line up. Not a big deal, but I don't like it. 
So I went ahead and made some left and right left and right hand pieces. So this one's got the little piece on this side. This one's got it on the opposite side. So they're mirror images of each other. That way when you put them together, they don't line up and they're nicely offset and matching the rest of the pattern, which I also think kind of helps everything blend together and look nice. So to do that, I needed to make sure that the middle piece and the bottom piece, um, they aren't reversible if you put it on the wrong side because um, they have this little bit on the end. The other three pieces, if you put the little piece on the other wrong side, you can just spin it around and it's good to go. So I will hopefully have an image here of what the left and right hand side pieces look like. Um, but I went ahead and set my hot wire to a five, in, five eighths of an inch depth and made all the little cuts. Um, just a slight divot really with the hot wire. And then I went ahead and put it at one and a quarter inch and made the rest of the lines. Once that was done, I went ahead and extended those lines down the sides of the bricks, um, the tiles. This makes it look more like brick and it saves a step later on from having to cut those in by hand. At this point, if you haven't beveled any of the edges, definitely do that. Bevel them all. If you don't want to do this step, you can definitely skip it, but just comparing them, this one's got a lot sharper edges. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't look as realistic. This one's got some nice um, bevels between the stones too, which just really helps it blend with the other stonework. Um, if you stack these, they blend quite nicely with those, those beveled edges. Once they're beveled, um, also take a rock or something hard and kind of rough. I use a geode and just texture all the surfaces. You might not technically need to do the bottom surface, but I think it keeps everything consistent and little height differences can add up. Um, definitely would texture the bottom of the 3x3. Three three. And since you're doing that, you want to make sure that everything else lines up nicely with it. So I just find it easiest just to texture everything. You don't have to worry about it. You probably get away with not texturing the bottoms, but definitely would texture this, the top all the way through and the sides. Next step is to cut in the tile, the stone patterns on the bottom. This isn't really necessary, but there are cases if you want to build a tower and don't feel like putting a dungeon tile on top, this stonework is going to be visible. I just extended the lines from the edges and connected them, and it doesn't look great, but it's pretty decent, and my mind was kind of in a panic mode of I only have a few hours to paint these guys, so I just went with the basic. You could definitely make some nice stonework pattern on here and make it look good instead of just passable. Uh, so if I make more of these, I would definitely think of a better stone pattern to make these lines look nice. Uh, you could consider doing a hot wire for connecting the lines. It's very difficult though to look and connect the bottom line with the top line. I did try and hopefully that piece never shows up again so nobody can see how bad it looked. Yeah, wouldn't recommend. But this is actually the way you can do it if you don't have a hot wire cutter and you're doing all this by knife, which is totally doable. Can't say I'd recommend it just because it's a huge time sink even with a hot wire cutter to make these honestly. But to make these with a knife I mean, good for you, mate. I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, anyway, just take a knife, slice along here, use a ruler if you want these nice and straight. I wasn't too worried about it, so I just kind of freehanded it. Pretty decent at keeping relatively straight lines. Uh, and then take a pen and just bevel that, that cut. That makes it look a little bit deeper. It's not quite the same as the hot wire cuts, but it looks pretty good. 
So you can go ahead and glue all the tiles together. I stacked them all up in a way that made sense to me that I can just easily grab them and know what orientation they need to be in. So I just kind of stacked them up, used hot glue. Uh, first two pieces you put together, probably the three inch one and the next biggest one, I would lay them on the table and then make sure that they are square. So I put, I have a square with a flat edge on it that makes it stand up. So I can just put these on the table, make sure that they're nice and square. So that way you don't have a staircase that's kind of leaning in. I'm um, just trying to keep everything as square as possible. It's not critical if it's not perfectly square, but you want it pretty close. Especially when you have a lot of these making a larger structure, little imperfections like that can really make everything a little off and not fit together super nice. Once everything was hot glued, it's on to the painting. Uh, so I just sealed everything up with a layer of um, Mod Podge mixed with black paint. Uh, I did top and bottom, all surfaces with the paint jobs, since these can be used in just about any orientation. Honestly, any orientation. And then once the Mod Podge was dried, I went ahead and gave it another coat of black paint, since the Mod Podge layer didn't have a super opaque coat. Um, just cut it, covering it with another layer makes it everything nice and dark. Then I went ahead and added a dry brush layer of brown paint, which I think gives a nice muddy look, um, more realistic stone look. Stone isn't pure gray, pure black and gray and white. Uh, it's got some different colors in it. This way it still kind of stays the nice classic grays, but it's got a little bit of brown undertones. And after that was dry, I went ahead and added some lighter gray dry brushing. This really makes the stonework pop and that texture on the front surfaces look really good. At this point, if you wanted to, you can add a black wash. Uh, I'm not going to. I actually really like how these look. There are a few points where some green foam pokes through, so a wash can definitely help cover those up, especially with these a little bit bigger brick lines. But else you can also water down your black paint a little bit and it'll kind of pool in there a little bit better and give you a slightly better coverage. So that's about all there is to it. So as is, you can't really put a mini on the stairs, um, but you can add a, make a small, like 5 eighths inch wide or even half an inch wide block, make it an inch long, and then you can just stick that on the step where you want the mini and that can give them a little bit more stable surface to stand on. For larger minis you can make actually like a small staircase or for really big minis you can just take a whole extra staircase and stick it upside down for them if you got like a long staircase they're going up. So there's options on that. Just get creative. Here's a few ideas what you can do with just these guys on their own. You gotta use your imagination a little bit since there's no fancy battlements or crenellations on these guys so do use your imagination but coming soon I will have a video demonstrating more of these so stay tuned if you want to see some of that
In the meantime, I do have this lovely video on Dungeon Tiles if you care to check it out. Uh, definitely a good starting project, good thing to have in your terrain collection. For that, I'll see you in the future.